was your wallet anyway? Nothing's even on. Oh no, don't tell me I can't see the live chat. Why is that not? It's saying them all right there. Weird. Um. Oh, is it because I'm popped? Oh no, I'm not popped out. I'm right, you should be live. I should be live. I'm just having trouble with the live chat. If anyone could jump in the live chat, and then I'll know if it's alright or not, but for some reason it's it's working fine on OBS, but not on the uh, live control room, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, oh, there we go. Yeah, it seems to be working cool. Seems to be working cool. Doing do it yourself lifestyles in there. Karen's in there. Oh, God, we've got loads of people jumping in. Uh, Adam Kelsey is in there. Uh, Carol L is in there. Chrissy is in there. Hi there, guys. All my regulars in there. Um, so, yeah, it is a bit of an odd time to come on. 10, 10 to 10. Weird, weird time. Um, but, yeah, I've got to slow down with eBay a little bit now, which is annoying because I'm realising I've got a large inventory, but I've not got... I, I've got... I mean, I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I've got enough sales there, but... What I want to do is decrease that inventory slightly and get some more sales, so even more sales than I've currently got. And that's the goal for anyone, really. But what I, basically what I want to do is decrease my stock holdings but increase my sales. That's the whole process. And then once I've done that, I want to start really heavy-hitting listing again. But at the moment, I'm getting to that, um, that realm where um, space is starting to become an issue and I'm thinking, right, well, what, what I want to do is I want to stay with this level of space. I want to, like, um, I want to stay with this level of space, but I want to be able to increase my sales in this space, like, in the space I'm at. So, because there's no point, like, constantly upgrading the, the, the amount of space you're having to get, but you're doing that. You're, like, you, you're putting more and more listings on, but really... You could have avoided all that cost and that moving and all that sort of stuff by just making your listings more efficient and increasing your sell through rate by doing loads of different things. So that's what I'm going to try and do. So I'm not doing as many listings on eBay at the moment, which is quite nice, to be honest. It's quite nice. I've still got FBA to do. I'm still concentrating on FBA. But that's why I'm coming at you at 10 to 10 and not like 1 o'clock after my lunch or whatever because I'm like... Mm. You know, I'm, a bit, I'm chilling a bit, I'm chilling a bit. I've still got a lot of work to do with Amazon, I'm still sourcing heavily. But, um, yeah, so anyway, I've still I've picked up loads at the auction. So I thought I'd go through bits and bobs with you. Uh, a few of the bits that I quite like, a few of the bits that I'm interested in. And we can have a little bit of a chat. Um, Adam says, yeah, being a while, uh, my work shift pattern is weird. It's weird, yeah, is that weird, yeah. Um... Uh, do, 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 do. Uh, do, do, do. Southwest Ellis says, hi Adam, hi there, um, suit at 10 a.m., why Adam? Suit? This is not a suit, this is a coat. Basically, I was in the garage. Um, I, basically, I was in the garage because I put all the auction stuff in the garage ready um, to sort in the garage, so then I'm not bringing a load of unwanted crap into the house. So... Anything that is like real crap, I've pulled out before it goes in the house. It's a bit more efficient that way. So, um, yeah, I've been it, but it's freezing today. So I've had to have this really big coat on. You'll probably see me in this big coat a bit more now because it's getting colder. It was really warm yesterday, but today, it's, oh my God, it's cold. It's going to brighten up and it's going to get a lot better today, though. Um, do, do, do. What's up, Ad? How's it going? Oh, it's it's going good. Um, also, I want to tell you, I did go to a car boot on Sunday, uh, even though I said that I wouldn't go to a car boot. Um, basically, I woke up, and my mum was scrolling Facebook in her room, and um, she shouted me, and she said, Adam, do you know there's a car boot at Winsham uh, Community Centre at 10 o'clock? And this was, like, at 10 o'clock. This was, like, very, very close to 10 o'clock. And, um... Basically, I, I was like, no, I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't bloody know that. So I thought, right, where's the keys? Where's the key? It was like something out of bloody Die Hard or something. It was like, let's go. So I was like, grab me keys, got in the car, boom, right down there, shot down there. I only had about 30, 40 quid on me. I was like, damn it, you know? And there was actually some decent stuff there. It was an indoor one, and I thought, oh, it's not going to be very good. So, you know, I won't need loads of money, but 
shot down there. I ended up buying a few things. I bought a Wii console and stuff like that. And then I thought, right, I've got to get more money. But the cash machine was back in Lostock, where I am. Winsham's only about a five minute drive, so it's fine. But got back in the car, went over to, went back to Lostock, got the cash, went back. And you know what I did? You know what I did? I made a terrible mistake. There was a Nerf, right? This is like holy grail of Nerf stuff. There was a Nerf Elite Rhino, the double barreled one, you know, that's really big. And it's like, you hardly ever see it in the wild, right? And I made the mistake of not asking them to hold it for me, or just saying, could you hold it for me? I'll be back in a minute, you know, something like that. Just anything, just saying to them something that I really, you know, uh, that I really wanted it, but I've just not got the money yet, but I'll be back in a minute. But I didn't do that, and I thought, well, I'm gonna chance it. Went to, it was, I was literally five minutes, went to Lost Up the cash machine, got back there, it had bloody gone, and I, and I saw at the far end of the car boot a guy holding it. I'm glad it was a family guy. If it was another reseller, I would have really, I'd have really annoyed, but he looked like a family guy. He had two kids with him. I mean, he could have been a reseller, but it's nice that, I, you know, I thought, oh, well, it's gone to a family, you know, but God, I was so annoyed because I really wanted to pick that up and I wanted to, uh, do it, you know, put a picture on Instagram and then tag Ben Fitzpatrick in the post because I know he really wants one of them, he really wants to find one, but God, that was so annoying, but I knew, I knew it would go, I just knew it, I knew when I was driving back, I thought, it's, it's gone, it's gone because the time to buy something is when you see it, that's like one of the golden rules of reselling, time to buy it is when you see it, so anyway, I'll get on with the haul, I know I've rambled a lot, so yeah, um, yeah, picked up like a load of stuff for like 118 quid, something like that. So I'm just going to go through like a few selective bits with you. Um, so this was something that piqued my interest. Obviously, obviously you can see the part lot there, 106. Well, maybe you can't, but yeah. Um, this is a J Watson and Co. Crystal Mineral Water Works Durham. Now, the reason this piqued my interest is for one, it has a lid, which is always good with these bottles because like more than half the time these don't have a lid but the other reason it intrigued me was because I've never seen a bottle, a glass bottle like this uh, an old glass bottle like this yes okay I've not had that much experience but I've not seen one yet that actually is for water I've, I've seen loads for beer you see loads countless for beer um, you see like oh what's the other you, you see loads of other different things but not water so that's why it piqued my interest. So this is meant for mineral water. So I don't know whether that gives it any extra value or any extra appeal to collectors, but maybe it does. Um, I don't know what it's going for on eBay. Like standard bottles, you may be looking like anywhere from about eight to 15 pound really, but I don't know with that one, with it having its lid and it might be something special, I might be able to get more than that, but I don't know. If I was to put that in my booth, I'd, uh, not my booth, my cabinet, I'd probably be asking less than eBay prices for it because that's what I found with cabinets and like the antique center and stuff generally a lot of the stuff is priced less than eBay it's like its own market it's not eBay prices it's not like that it's it's like it, it's not like rock bottom prices it's not trade prices but it's not eBay prices it's somewhere in the middle really um, and it's taken me quite a while to work that out, but yeah, um, I'm glad I've worked that out now because now I know where where my focus needs to lie. Um, so yeah, anyway, so that was pretty cool. So it's uh, yeah, mineral water bottle, crystal mineral water. So that's pretty cool. I got like a big job lot of bottles, like 10, 15 quid. I paid like a pound a piece, something like that. So can't really lose on them. Um, there was a few other bottles in there. There was. Uh, there was one that just seems to have the address on. So that's the address of the place. C. Willem, 47 Temperance Street. Now, maybe they put the address on the bottle so that then someone at the time could return it. Because I know that, you know, going back years and years and years, you used to get money for returning your bottles. So maybe that's why they put the address on so people can return it and get their little bit of money for the bottle. It was only like a very, very small amount of money you used to get, but... My granddad used to tell me about that, so I don't know, maybe that's why they put the address on there, but it doesn't say what was in it, maybe it used to do, but that was in the job lot as well. Um, doo -doo -doo. We've got another like a stoneware bottle, Harris & Co, stone ginger, uh, yeah, stone ginger beer. You see a lot of these ginger beer ones like this, nothing really, really special, but you know, still, nice little bottle there. This one doesn't have the lid, 
See if I can find another one with the lid. I think there was one. Uh, we've got a few more just like brewers. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about, about seeing brewers ones. This is uh, the flea, oh god, I can't even pronounce that. Fi Flynn Foal. Fi Flynn Foal Brewery. I think that's how you pronounce Oh god, that is really hard to pronounce. But yeah, like a little brewer's bottle there again. Um, we've got another brewery one. Uh, Kroonstad Brewery. Kroonstad or something. I don't know. But, you know, like, out of all these bottles, the majority are, like, brewery ones, you know, beer ones, so, or ginger beer. So, to see a crystal mineral water one is, is interesting to me. And again, as I say, because it has its lid, I'm really, I'm, I, I like that. I like the fact that it has its lid. And then we've got a few, oh, we've got, a, I think these are called cod neck bottles or something, or cod thingy bottles, cod bottles or something with a little ball in there. don't know why they're called cod bottles. Maybe it's because... I'm thinking it's because of the shape of it or something, and with this, like, these here are representing the gills, these, like, indents, but I don't know, I'd have to do more research on that, but this is, I don't know what that is now, I don't know what it contains, I don't know what it contains, it doesn't say on there, or what it would have contained, I don't know, it says James Howard, oh, this is mineral water as well, so maybe mineral water isn't that uncommon, but I've never seen him before. Hmm. I thought it was more uncommon than that, but no, this is mineral water as well, but you know, I didn't really, I've not seen as many mineral water ones, so maybe it's just me. Um, and then we've got this sort of one here, which is like, uh, what is it, octagonal? Something like octagonal there, which is pretty cool. And that's like more, this like m looks more like a um, pharmacy type bottle, I don't know, but I'm just guessing, but it looks like that kind of style. Uh, especially with it being this brown colour as well. Um, but that's pretty cool. So that was in job. It does say something on the bottom. Milton. So I'm assuming that's Milton Keynes. Um, but yeah, so that was a few, few bits in that job lot. In the bottle job lot. Um, oh, this was a nice little job lot I got. Um, so first off, I am assuming this is a cigar case of some sort. It's pretty beat up kind of. You know, there's writing on it and stuff like that. I'm assuming it's a cigar case. I'm not 100% sure. Um, it says there, Jose, Jose Martin or Jose Martin, uh, Cuba Libre or Cuba Libre or something. So I'm assuming it's some sort of cigar case. It would have been a wooden cigar case. But that's cool. It just, it's, a, it's a shame about the condition on the top there, you know, with all this writing and stuff. Um, I'm not so worried about the, the sort of the char marks there, but the writing is, is a really annoying thing. Um, so with that, there was a really, really cool piece from all the way from the USA. Uh, this is a uh, number 30 combination tester for use in connection with 6 volt storage battery or dry cells. Whatever that means, I don't know, but it's a cool looking piece. It's wooden. Um, I thought it was something to do with phones at first. Maybe it is, but I don't know what I don't know what a combination tester is. It's probably the easiest thing in the world to uh, research. You know, you just type combination tester in, so I'll be able to research it. But it says on here it has a little sort of little plaque thing. Um, or oh, what does it say now? Jefferson Electric um, and Co or something, uh, Chicago, Illinois. So yeah, pretty cool that. And it's got like a little lead as well. It looks really, um, what's the word? It looks really like uh, Frankenstein-ish or something, this. And that's what I love about it. Um, maybe steampunk is a word, but I don't think steampunk is quite the right word. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. That I think it is missing something on here, though. Can you see there's like this little turning dial knob thing here? I think there's meant to, there's meant to be another one there. but I don't, I don't know, I can't be sure, but I think there is. Um, so that was that. I've got this thing that I don't know what it is, but that's quite common for me because I'm really, really new to this stuff though. And that's what I love, you know, like, I'll never get this time back. You know, when you're, when you're old and you know everything there is to know about your field, like whatever your field in antiques is, then nothing really excites you anymore because you're like, oh, well, that's that and that's that and that's that. And you know what everything is. But for me, at the moment, I have this unique, wonderful time where 
I don't know what anything is. So everything I see is like a new exciting experience. So it's really quite nice to have that. But I know one day when I know what everything is, when one thing starts to elude me, that's going to be the excitement again. You know, when when one thing is I'm really, really thinking hard of what that actually is, that's going to be really exciting again because I'll be brought back to this time of when I didn't really know what everything is. So we've got a lot of activity in the chat, so I'm trying to keep up here. I'm not even really keeping up, but um, do 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 do. Um, hi ads, you're early, says Lucy. Yeah, I am. Uh, Richard Payne joined us a while back, so sorry about that. Um, if it's got a pocket inside, it's a suit. It, well, it has. I think it's got about two pockets inside. Um, just joined your stream ads, looking very wheeler dealer in the jacket, I suppose. So yeah, I didn't really think about that. Um, not that many years and years and years, eh, Adam? Oh, I think they're just chatting in the chat. Uh, you got Gran Turismo yet? Oh, yeah, we're just, oh, we're all just having a chat. It's okay. It's okay, as long as I'm not uh, falling too far behind. Is this stock for your eBay? Or your cabinet. Sorry if I've missed the answer to this on YouTube. No, you didn't miss the answer. Um, bits and bobs for both, really. I mean, a lot of it will go on eBay. I mean, maybe a couple of the bottles I might chuck in the cabinet to see how they do. Um, yeah, but bits and bobs. Majority, I'm going to say eBay. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, this it's a, like a copper type cylinder vessel type thing. I don't know. I imagine it's for some sort of liquid. Well, it will be for some sort of liquid. Ooh, ooh, maybe it's uh, like a, for fuel. Is it for like some sort of fuel on something or? I don't know, I don't know. See, this is the beautiful thing. You don't know, you know, half the time I don't know and I'm like, I'm intrigued by it. Obviously it holds some sort of liquid, I'm sure of that. But it's what it's, what it used to hold, that's interesting. Um, it's a little bit too... Uh, what some people would call patinaed for me. Well, I would just call it a bit dented, but it, it is a little bit like if I was to collect this stuff, I I would want it like sort of to be a bit rough and ready, but I wouldn't want it too bit, uh, banged up. Like this one for me personally is too banged up. Um, but somewhat for someone else, this might be really attractive in this condition. So it really, you know, it depends on the buyer. But um, yeah, I don't know. It's got this little sort of threaded, you know, if I open this up, it's, you know, it's threaded here, um, with this, and there's what it looks like there, um, but I don't know, it's interesting, it's got the, I think this is brass, that's brass there, but this is copper, um, pretty cool item, I, I just don't know what it is, I don't know what I should be pitching it at, but immediately for something like that, I'm automatically thinking about 15 to 20. So if I'm thinking about 15 to 20, it's probably going to be a bit more, but I don't know. Um, I'm just like second guessing really. Um, but it is interesting, it's interesting that. Um, do do do, ads hit the auction yesterday, Se uh, 17 lots including a glazed two door mahogany bookcase for, for £2.20! What? That is, for like a complete bookcase? What? That is insane! Two door, oh, two door book kit. That's still got to be pretty big though, surely. Two door book, that's got to be big for two by twenty. It's crazy. Um, do do do. You got you seventeen lots as well. That is awesome. I um, initially had about twenty five lots I was looking at, but I refrained myself a little bit from spending a load because I've still got quite a lot of stock to process. So I ended up getting six lots out of them in the end. I could have got more, but I didn't. I, I didn't want to really push it because. Um, you know, I've still got loads of stuff. So yeah, that's that weird, cool looking thing. Um, I'll try and speed up a little bit because we've still got a little bit to get through. Uh, T.W. Uh, Parker Botanical Brewer. So what does Botanical Brewer mean? Like, do they use um, herbs and stuff in their brewing of beer? I don't know, something like that. Um, Lower Walton, Warrington. So Warrington's not far from me, so. There you go, 1934. So, pretty cool. Um, vintage, obviously not antique because it's 1934, but quite cool. Like a stoneware uh, bottle or what you call it. There's another word for it. 
there's another word for it than bottle, but I can't think of it now. Um, but again, hey, this is interesting. This has got its lid as well. This is the other one that's got its lid. Uh, oh no, wait, no, it isn't. It isn't. It's not the right lid. I don't think it's the right lid. It does fit it, or almost, yeah, it does fit it, but I don't think it's the right lid because it says W A Wilson, uh, London S it London S E. So I don't know. It's not the right lid, is it? But ah oh, well. Still, it has a lid. That's interesting, because a lot of these I see at the auctions don't have lids. Um, but yeah, that's quite nice. And it's always nice when you've got the name on there as well, because some of these are, are playing. Um, but that's quite nice, so yeah, that was interesting. Um, I got this weird thing that I don't know what it is again. <laughs> it is, I think it's a model of like a spinning jenny or something like that, or a, what is it, a spinning mule or something, whatever they used to call them. Uh, for like spinning yarn or something, but um, I don't, I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. Um, but it's something like that. It's something like that. It's some sort of model like that. Um, and it's just an interesting little piece. I don't suppose I'm going to get loads of money for it, but it's interesting. You know, it's quite cool. Um, where are we? Uh, them as a hot water bottle bugger when it falls out the bed. Do do do. Uh, question, do it yourself lifestyle. How has eBay been for you now you're not listing as much as? Well, I, I say I'm not listing as much. I only like, I only said that to myself like a day or two ago. So I can't really comment. I've had auctions end last night for about 70, 80 quids worth. I had a few sales on Amazon. I had a few buy it now sales. So yesterday I was well, I was well above the 100. I was probably about 150 to 180. So yesterday was fine. But, um, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably, you know, come like tomorrow or Friday or something, I'll update you because I've only really just sort of said to myself I'm going to do that, but I'm trying for about three to five listings a day, that's it, that's it, three to five a day, um, just for the next few days, just so that then I can sell a little bit more than I list and, and just get some, uh, you know, get more sales in than I'm actually listing, so that then it just helps you know helps decrease that inventory a little bit and just helps um naturally progress in the right direction in terms of getting more sales than just listing 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 because a lot of people like i used to think that just keep listing keep listing keep listing and get as many items in your store as possible i don't really think that anymore i'd rather like do quality control so i'd rather have you know maybe not like a ridiculously no low number of listings but let's say i don't know six to six hundred to a thousand let's say right but i want to focus on good saleable items and really getting out any of the, that crap out of my inventory which i've still got a little bit of crap in there and just like streamlining it making it um you know making my business into a stronger entity with the same amount of listings or even less listings than like just shooting for the moon and listing like three thousand items that you know you've got a sell through rate of really quite low because then what you're doing is you're being an efficient space wise you know you just you're constantly needing more and more space but you know you're just listing things for the sake of growing a store like like beyond it, it where it needs to be really so that's you know i'm going for quality rather than like loads and loads and loads of listings but i've always said that you know that's that's always been my plan but what i've been doing the last few weeks is just pushing it a little bit too much and I've been growing my listings loads but really I want to just bring it down a little bit and stay around that level where I'm comfortable with but with uh, good quality items which yeah that's that's kind of what I'm doing but um, I will update you and see how slow my sales have been because that is a bit of a worry for me but I'm also thinking if I'm not listing as much what I'd like to do is put on a very small sale like a 10% off sale or something to get a little bit more out the door so then it'll bring bring that uh, back to where I want it to be as well, bring my inventory back to where I want it to be as well, which will be good um, for what I want really. And then obviously Amazon I'm fine because I've got like 300 items up there. So I'm hoping to push that up to about 400, 500 by, like, well, by Christmas and then just let that boom right down because I know that the stuff up at Amazon I've got is quality stuff now. There's very, very few items that aren't going to sell at Christmas, so in theory, I should get a really, really strong sell through in December up at Amazon. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited for that, but I just need to push that a little bit further because I really want to do some good turnover on Amazon as well 
to help boost my, my eBay. Um, but yeah, anyway, so that was that. And I will move on with the haul. Um, but with this thing, um, handcrafted Mont Rose Potteries, Scotland. What's it got on there? Some ducks or something? Oh no, they're not ducks. I don't even know what they are. The, the, bird, the birds of some kind. The birds of some kind, but I don't know. Usually on pots like this, you get like, oh, there we are. Oh, this is funny. I was literally just about to say, usually on pots like this or things like this, you get pheasants. Look at that. There's pheasants on the other side. How class is that? Oh, my God. Oh, God. And pheasants, if you don't know, are di... I think it's dimorphic, the word is. And dimorphic means a species where the, the male looks different than the female so humans are dimorphic if that's the way you pronounce that word i'm not sure but um because the female looks different than the male i, I can't think offhand of a species where they're not so like where the male and female look the same i can't i can't think offhand but there, there are ones out there otherwise the term would be irrelevant because we'd all be the same right so yeah anyway so that's that it's pretty cool pheasants on there so you learn something new every day with me um, but yeah, that's that's that. So that's pretty cool. Um, I should shall I do the? Oh, shall I do the? One sec. Let me. Uh, I got some like. Oh, not them. I got some like uh, Meccano parts, like old Meccano parts. Don't really know what I'm gonna do with them. Don't really like dealing with them that much. Um, oh, also in the title of the video, I said pencil sharpeners. I got a load of. These are called Play Me pencil sharpening now this one doesn't actually have the play me branding logo on it but i think it still is play me i'm not sure it does look like that and these play me pencil sharpeners going off what my mum said were quite big about well like in the 80s that's what she said to me um and she used to use them and stuff um but they were sh pencil sharpeners basically in the form of just random objects these cool objects so this is like uh, a motorcycle and as you can see there there's where your pencil would get sharpened in that thing there, the little hole there. Um, but yeah, I don't think these are all play me, but there are certain ones that are play me. Um, I don't even know what that's meant to be, but it, I mean, it's a pencil sharpener, but I don't know what it's meant, what the object is meant to be. It's a weird kind of like object that maybe a light or something. I don't know. Weird. Weird. But yeah, still pretty cool. Um, we've got a. Another, like, spinning Jenny kind of contraption thing there, which is pretty cool. And again, this is... Ah, there's the brand. I don't know whether you're going to see this, but... Oh, God, where am I going? It does say Play Me on there. Play Me. I know you won't be able to see it, but it says Play Me. Um, see if it has a date on there. No, I can't see a date anywhere. But, yeah, so that's that. I've got loads of these. I've got, like... Well, I've got a big box of them. Well, not a big box, a little box. But, you know, there's quite a lot in the box. This is another play me one. Um, I think these do okay in little job lots and stuff like that. I think there's certain ones that are more sought after than others. Um, so if I've got any, like, certain one that's more sought after and worth selling individually, then that's great. If I haven't, then I'll probably do, like, a little small job lot. I might even throw a couple of these in my cabinet as well because they're nice and small. Uh, and they're just perfect little item for, like, a bread and butter sale in the cabinet. So... Yeah, so, I mean, I've got absolutely loads. I've got absolutely loads. I've got like a little old uh, automobile or a little old car there. Uh, I, I couldn't tell you what the model is. And we're, oh, 1917, it says on there. Um, so that must be like when the model was made of the car. I don't know. don't know. Obviously, it wasn't when this was actually made, but it was, uh, you know, it might signify the age of the model of the car they're going for or something. I don't know. But yeah, um, loads of little pieces and bits and bobs in there. I've got a nice colourful globe one there, which is pretty cool. But I don't know whether that's play me. I can't see play me on that one. Can't see play me on a few of them, but they're in the very, very, very same style. So, you know, but pretty cool. Um, so there's loads of them in there. There's probably a few more that I haven't shown. Well, yeah, there is a few more that I haven't shown you. But that'll do. Um, I got this weird... Oh, it's a music box. That's what it is. So it's a music box of, it's like a souvenir music box type thing of a church in somewhere in probably Germany going off that name there. 
yeah, it looks like German writing, Matt, or something like that. So I can't read it. it it's Kil, Kilner, Kilner, Dan. Dan. I don't know. I don't know. But it's a church somewhere, and it's a little souvenir type mu music box. Um, yeah, pretty cool. Pretty cool little item. Probably going to get some money back for that, but I doubt it's going to be big money or anything like that. But we'll see. You know, some of these items might do okay. Um, right, where are we now? Uh, do, do, do. Oh, these are more like uh, rods for Meccano. So I'm not I'm not really interested in them or anything like that. And then we've got this um, matchbox. Ooh, it'll even... Where did I get it? Oh, right, that's why. I've got it up the wrong way. I've got this, like, matchbox... Well, I don't have it up the wrong way, but... Uh, I've got this matchbox carry case, not in the best condition. But it's got a load of cars in there. I don't know whether these are matchbox or not. Oh, yeah, a few of them are, yeah. Little die-cast matchbox thing. Probably not loads of money, but the carry case, I'll get it cleaned up a bit. It isn't... really isn't in the best of condition, but I can... I can clean it up uh, as well as I can, you know. Um... We've got a few different other cars in here, like one yesteryear Lido type thing in there, which isn't very good. Um, but yeah, we've got a few bits and bobs in here. That isn't Matchbox either. Yeah, but a few little bits and bobs. We've got some sort of Lamborghini type thing in here, if I can get it out. Mm. Yeah, but there's probably going to be something in that as well. Um, and then we've got like a weird 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 contraption model of a don't even know what it is it's like a what even is that i mean it, i know that these are meant to go up there or something but god what even is that gonna do god it's a weird contraption that is but yeah it's, a, it's something for building works or something i don't know but um yeah and that's metal as well no it's like plastic yeah yeah it's plastic is it plastic? Yeah, I think it's plastic. I think these end bits are metal, but most of it's plastic. So yeah, that's that one. Um, I think I'm just going... Oh, I've got some cameras to show you, and then I've got a brass. So, uh, what are we? 32 minutes. We're not too bad. Um, sharpeners need to change your video title. Oh, what? Okay, I've said sharpeners wrong. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. See, my spelling's terrible. Sorry. Right, I'll change the video title. Uh, I don't even know where I can do it yet. I'll have to change it later on. Sorry. <laughs> sharp, what? I put sharp, sharpers, sharpers or something I put, but oh my god. Um, thought you were just teasing us with pencil sharpeners in the time. Oh, uh, oh, you thought, oh, right, okay. Um, no, uh, yeah, sharpeners need to take, that's funny. Um, how did the Warhammer go on auction on e your eBay ads? It went very well. I got like 40 quid for one set. I got, I, I really didn't have anything in it, you know, I had, I paid 20 quid for a job lot of it on, at the car boot, which you'll see in a whole video, one of the items I put on 30 quid on Buy It Now, so that basically covers my investment, and then the others I decided to auction off, and I got, um, 38 for one, for the big, like, Tomb Kings Battalion or whatever, I probably could have got more on Buy It Now, but I was just happy to get shot of it, um, the, uh, Zombies pack or something, I think I got, like, 10 to 15 for that, and then there was another battle type pack that was uh, again about 10, 15, something like that. But I was more than happy with that from the 20 quid, and, and as well as having that extra 30 quid one on, buy it now as well. So, yeah, quite happy with how that went. Uh, I need to pack that up today, actually. You've just reminded me. Um, do, do, do. Don't put play me in the title ad. Why? What's. What's so bad about a play me? Playboy more like it, more like it adds. Oh my god. Um, right, so that's all the chat. Sales on eBay have been great for October. Had £600 days in the last 10 days. Sold six items on GSP in the last week. That's great. Uh, yeah, I've, I've done pretty well for October. I'm still not... I don't think I'm going to be quite where I want to be, but I'll certainly do some decent, decent money, but... I would, I would like to say I hit like 5k in October, but I don't think, I don't think I'll do it. I don't think I'll quite do that, but um, I'll certainly do, I'll certainly do 4k, maybe 4.5, but then, you know, once my costs and everything are off, I might do 2,000 net, something like that, 1,500, 2,000 net, but being fourth quarter, I'd really like to have pushed a bit more than that, but if I can do 
that that in October, and then I do like if I do like uh, a lot, a fair bit in November, and then I do like a real good sum in December. Then I've had a fairly good quarter for. I'll have done better than last year anyway. I'm already better. Do, I'll, 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 I'm already on to do better this October than I did last October. So that's fine. You know, if I'm on to do better this October than last October, that's all I can wish for, really. If I was to do worse this October than last October, then I'd be worrying. But because I've done, or I will do better, I don't even know, I might have already done better now. But um, yeah, because I'm on to do better, then, uh, you know, I can't complain. Really can't complain. Um, do, 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 do. Oh, ha anyone how much, know how much you paid? I paid 118 for uh, six lots, but that doesn't necessarily mean six boxes. I think a couple of the lots had two boxes in. But um, I'm not sh I'm not showing it at all. I'm just kind of picking out random bits and um, pieces really to show you. Um, so I've got a job lot of cameras uh, and camera stuff. I only paid this was pretty good actually. I only paid ten quid for this lot, which I thought I'd have to pay more than that. I don't even know whether it's worth it. One sec, it's all bloody uh, tangled together. Yeah, I don't know whether. It's worth it or not, but I thought for 10 quid, you surely there's there's more than that in there. Um, one sec, let me put this down because it's all bloody tangled together. Right, um, we've got a Toshiba TS70 electronic something or other it says on here. Electronic flash unit, so that's what that is. Yeah, that, it looks in really good condition actually. For, you know a vintage oh there it is there's the flash there pretty cool um and then we've got some sort of camera in here oh it's a uh fujika fujika i don't know whether they're any good or not i've not really dealt with cameras loads i've had a fair few cameras but i still don't know what i'm doing with them um fujika uh fuji photo film co uh one uh 18 F equals 4.5 centimeters and stuff. Anyway, yeah, I'm gonna have to do some research on that, but it's in its case. Um, what else have we got? Oh, I got this in here, which piqued my interest in a lot. I don't think it's gonna be worth load, but uh, a JVC uh, digital night scope, digital vid video camera. Um, I don't know whether there's any, I didn't even check, but I don't know whether there's any, like, um, you know, uh, power unit or anything like that. Let me have a check. Well, there's some sort of units in here. I don't know whether there's a power unit, but... Oh, yeah, it looks like there's some sort of power unit there. Don't know what you see. I didn't even check. Half the stuff, I, 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 do, I do tend to check at auction, but I don't view as much as I maybe should. Because I'm, I'm getting to that stage now where if there's, like, two boxes or three boxes of stuff and I get it for 10 or 15 quid, I know there's money there, even if I just have a very quick route through. Um... But yeah, so that was that. I saw that in there and I thought, oh, it's probably going to be a bit of money, Matt. Like, what I generally do is judge it on quantity. So I'm just like, if there's like, I'll say if there's like two boxes of stuff and the estimate's like 10 to 20 or something, I'm like, yeah, if, it, if it's cheap, I'll grab it, you know? And it always tends to work out well in your favour because there's always something in there that's uh, worth going on. Um, if it's... The only thing I would say, if it's breakable, I do check properly because then you'll get stung. But if it's not, like the glasses, I had a look over. But if it's just like a big box of toys or something, I'll have a quick route through. But I won't I won't go into major detail on it. If I see like, let's say I see something in there that is worth 30 quid. And I know that the estimate's 10 to 20. Well, I'll happily go to 20 quid on that because there might be two other boxes of stuff that come with it. So you're automatically in the clear with that one item and then you think, well, the other stuff, I'll, I've got to scrape a little bit of money off. So that's kind of how I look at it. But yeah, I got that in there. I got a load of other bits and pieces. I don't think there's anything major, but well, because it went for fairly cheap. So um, I well, I was the only bit actually. But um, so I don't think there's anything major in there, but there's a little camera there. Um, what else have we got? Uh, do, do, do something in here. I don't even know whether there is anything in here. No, I think it's fell out. I think it's fell out somewhere. There was something in there. 
There's another power unit of some description there, JVC power unit. Uh, do, do, do. Let me see what else is in it. There's a random remote for a JVC thing, so I imagine that's the camcorder or something, I don't know. Uh, do, do. Uh, let me see, let me see. Oh, there's something here. There's a box, so, something boxed here. Uh, let's see. Let's see. I think it's like a Fujifilm camera. Uh, it's a Fujifilm Zoom 5x5 five ta uh, five Zoom Fine Pix camera there in its box with a power lead of some description, and I think that's about it. I don't think there's any USB lead. I think there is meant to be USB lead with these. But there doesn't seem to be one in here. But I think you can pick them up for fairly cheap. I don't know. Is this like a... Is this a USB lead camera? I'd assume so. I don't really know enough about cameras. But you would imagine so. Well, that's that one anyway. And then there's a few other nondescript little bits and bobs. Like we've got some sort of charger there and stuff. And we've got a few other leads and bits. And I think there might be another camera in the bottom. But I'm not sure. And we've got a few, like, tapes, but unfortunately I think they're actually taped over. I think there was a new and sealed one in there, though. Sure. Or was it, was it the other job lot? There was two... There was two job lots of cameras I was looking at. So I think the other one had the new and sealed tape in. Well, that's okay, because they're not worth that much anyway. Um, Panasonic DV cassette tape. So there's a load of these little... Well, not a load, there's about five of them. Um, of these, like, taped over ones. I suppose you could still sell them, but I don't know, would I have to like, um, you know, would I have to blank them or something? I don't know, I've never really sold the used ones, I've only ever picked up new ones. Uh, right, where's the chat at? Uh, oh my god, oh my god. We've got a lot of chat. Um, <laughs> no, no, I didn't pull that, no, no, there wasn't a mute. I did, I did check when I was going through those camera job lots. I was like, oh, I wish there's like a Mu, or however you say it, Muju 2 or whatever it's called, I don't know. But I was looking for them like, oh yeah, there's got to be one in it, but I, I didn't see them at the auction house on viewing, so um, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't like go, I thought, because if like, um, if there was one of those in there, I would have bid up like crazy anyway, you know, even if someone else knew that was in there, because it would have been worth it to bid up, but there wasn't anything like that in there, I don't think anyone else saw anything in there, because the camera job lots didn't really get bid up loads. Um, do do do, where are we here? Do do do. Don't really do eBay anymore, for various reasons. At the moment, got one bundle on eBay, so just trying to get rid of stock I have. So, start afresh next year when things pick up. Uh, it's a crane ad. Oh, right, is that, a, is that a crane? Oh, it doesn't look like a crane, but okay. Um, what, uh, where are your eBay fees that just came out ads? What are, what are your eBay fees? I don't know, I've not even checked. Why, they come out, I, I know they come out between the 15th and 17th for me. I don't know, like 300, 400, something like that. I don't even know, I've not checked. Let me have a look. Let me have a look. It's a fair bit, usually, my fees. It's not as much as other people, but it's a fair bit. Do do. It might not have come out yet, but I imagine it will have done. Do do. One sec. Yeah, £334.91, so a fair chunk, but not terrible. Um, generally, I just let it go out, and I'm like, right, that's that. Because if you think, if it's about 10% of your overall sale or something like that, then it's not terrible, is it? You know, it's not, it's not like, major, major terrible. And uh, with, doing, with doing FBA, I kind of... I, I'm not as begrudging as some people are to eBay fees, because I'm like, oh my god, Amazon needs crazy crazy fees so if you you know when you go back to ebay and look at your fees you're like oh that's yeah okay that's fair enough because <laughs> you're like you're on amazon it's so it's so crazy um but it's the same like with um say you were selling on amazon fba you were selling on ebay and then you were selling on a site called bricklink which is 
uh, basically where people sell Lego on Bricklink the fees are three percent that's it three percent so imagine if you were selling on Bricklink if you were someone who sold on Bricklink eBay and Amazon don't know where you'd get the time to do all that but if you sold on Bricklink and you sold on eBay and Amazon imagine the sort of the men mentality of that because you've got 40% fees basically on Amazon that is basically what we're looking at at the moment you know I've had 40% months for my fees and then on Bricklink getting charged 3% it's like that 37% difference in fees that is that is crazy so when you know when I sell on um, because I sell on Amazon I'm not that bothered about eBay fees you know they're like oh right you know it's okay it's a fair it's a fair amount um, where you keeping all this stuff must have to be a warehouse that no no it's not quite that yet maybe one day maybe one well it probably will well maybe not a warehouse but yeah a, a big premises i'll have one day i imagine um but it's still early days i don't know um can't believe i am sat here still in my pjs for god's sake Lee, so it's half 10 come on get out of your blooming bed or, or out of your blooming pajamas come on you get some work done um Peter Cummins had my first FBA products go live today. Very, very exciting that is. When I first had my FBA uh, products go live, that was really, really cool. Um, but I didn't know when I... This, oh, God, it's terrible. Um, when I joined FBA, I didn't know how to... On your Amazon seller app, I didn't know how to um, pull up the other European platforms, right, to see your sales in the European platforms. Very easy, you just click the like the three dots at the top and then you go and you can select down the menu to whichever of the, I think it's four or five marketplaces you can, you know, you can see your sales for. I didn't know that and I had got a load of sales, your, like European sales, um, but I didn't, I wasn't getting, weirdly enough at that time, I don't know why this was, but weirdly enough, I wasn't getting very many sales in the UK, but I was getting loads of European sales. And um, when, um, basically, on the first day, I got one sale, I think it was, on my UK site, and it was like £5.70. And I was like, oh my God, this is awesome. I've made a sale, I've made a sale. And then it kind of tailed off, and I didn't get a sale for a day or so, or two days. And uh, then, I re like, this was quite a while later, maybe a few weeks later or something, I realised that you can go into your, you know, on your Amazon app and go down the um, European markets. And then I realised I've had sales on the European markets. And, and I was like, oh my God, so that's where some of the sales were as well. But um, it is very exciting when you're doing FBA and, and your first one goes live. And you get the tendency in that first few weeks to check the Amazon app at least five times a day. I'd say at least three, but if not five times a day. I was checking it like every few minutes on that first day. Um, but the, the biggest piece of advice is I say just don't. Just get on with listing more and getting more sent up there or get on with listing on eBay. The worst thing you can do with any sort of investment or any sort of uh, you know business like Amazon or eBay is constantly check it. Because you're only going to get down, you know. Just focus on the future. Focus on getting more items listed. And the sales will come along with that. But the worst thing you do, and, and it's the same with like a long-term investment. Or let's say you're investing in gold or something like that. And you're constantly going on checking the gold price. You know, and, it, and, then, and then it goes down. And you're like, oh my god, it's gone down by one penny a gram. And then what you're not realizing and, and to you that's the end of the world because your investment's gone down by one penny a gram and let's say you're a thousand grams or whatever you know it, it's like it, it's like terrible to you but if you had just not looked at that at that time and then came back to your investment in a few weeks time and looked at the price it might have gone up in the in the longer term by about five pence a gram so you would have saved yourself that worry if you just didn't constantly look at it it's like day traders on the stock market the amount of stress they must have to endure because they're on it constantly trying to look at the prices going up and down and trying to figure out whether it's a good buy now, whether I should sell it now, whether uh, the price is going to skyrocket, what, what's in the news, is the news, is there rumours about certain stocks that will make the price go up uh, or is there bad news about the stocks or whatever, you know, it's just, it would be too hard but you don't want to get into that mind frame of constantly checking things. Just 
let it flow, keep the work going, you know, all that sort of stuff. Anyway, I'll do some glassware. Got this nice kind of, um, I think it's kind of a cum, uh, uh, cum uh, cr uh, I can't even speak, crumb tray, that's what I was trying to say. I think it's like a crumb tray, it's quite a nice one, it's kind of like a, a tinny brass, um, but it is, it's still quite a nice little design on there. Um, and I think there's meant to be some sort of brush or something with it, but I've not got one. Um, but yeah, pretty cool that, I quite like that. Um, it's got a little bit of this, what do you call it, on glassware, like, um, not oxidisation, is it, or rust or something, I don't know. But it's got a bit of this green stuff on there that you see. Um, so, yeah, that's that one anyway, I got that in the glassware job, I've got a load of glassware, I've got these kind of like charger type, uh, tin, tinny plates. I don't think these get you a lot of money back, to be honest, but they're in the job lot. Um, as you can tell, you can tell by the noise there, and you can tell by, I can just tell by feeling that it's like a tinny brass. Um, but yeah, so that's it. I suppose people maybe hang, oh yeah, there's a little uh, hanger on the back there. I suppose people hang these maybe on the wall. I don't know how many people do that now, but um, I don't know, but maybe some people hang them on the wall or something. Um, I've got another one there, it's very similar design, if not the same design, so that's that one. And then, I've got a blooming massive one. Doo-doo, ad, uh, wait, 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 ad, I'm constantly checking the FBA screen, screen, uh, screen, willing stuff to sell. I probably check it, on average, if I'm being quite honest, two to three times a day now. But it's less than I was checking it, you know, at the, at the start, I mean, I said, I, you know, I just said then five times a day. That was my minimum at the start. I would be checking it 10, 15, 20, 30 times a day. And it just really isn't necessary. Maybe I'll do, you know, two or three times a day. I'll say maybe once in the morning, maybe once in an afternoon, but sometimes I'll forget. And then once at night, you know, come back nine o'clock. But yeah. Uh, so this is this. I don't you know. I'm just going to go back onto my screen so then I know that you can see it. Massive uh, blast charger type thing this and again, it's like a tinny one Don't know quite how saleable this is gonna be but still it's Sort of has some appeal I guess I mean it's not really for me this kind of stuff, but um, Someone will like it. You know, I like glassware, but I just don't like these tinny Chargery type things. It's not really uh, I just don't particularly it doesn't really do much for me. However, these type things let me get this one here in particular. These things I do like, and these are uh, garden sprayers. And I, these have sold well, well, I say sold well, I mean, they, they aren't the fastest sellers in the world, but you can get some decent money from them if you hold out. Like, I think I got for a fairly long one of these, um, I think it was 40 quid or something. Not this size one, it was longer than this. And it did have a maker's mark on, I don't think this one has a maker's mark on, or a little maker's plaque type thing on. Um, but yeah, you can get some decent money for these if you hold out. Um, don't know what I'm going to be pitching this one at. Probably, no, I wouldn't say that high because that other one was, was nicer. But yeah, um, that's pretty cool. Go on I've got quite a few of them. Well, I've got like three, I think, of these. Three or four of these. Um, so we've got this. I think this one does have a... Oh, no, it's not this one that has a maker's mark. It's the other one. But another one there, which is pretty cool. So yeah, I can understand. I, I can kind of understand the logic of someone collecting these. The tin plate charger things, they don't really do it for me, to be honest. But I suppose it's what what you like, isn't it? You know, you collect what you like. Um, we've got another one here. This is still not the one with the maker's model. But I don't know what this is. is this, I think it still is some sort of garden sprayer or blast sprayer thing. But it's not got any holes. Has it got any holes? At, oh, no, it has got holes. It has got holes at the end. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I just couldn't see the holes properly there. But, yeah, it's got some holes where the liquid would come out there. Well, that's pretty cool. And then we've got the one with the makers. Yeah, this one does have the makers mark, which is going to help it. Um, or it's it's like a little sort of plaque type thing on their raised kind of makers plaque thing. Um, Ernest H Hill, Sheffield. So yeah, that's quite cool. Quite cool one. Um, yeah, so I think someone will like that. You know, having the makers plaque thing on there. I got another tin, tinny charger thing. Oh, oh, I, I don't like them, I don't like them, but you know, someone will like them, I suppose. I got some of these uh, brass uh, candlesticks. Mm, brass candlesticks, I think I've sold a couple of pairs of brass candlesticks, but I've still got a few in stock. They're not 
amazing, amazing. But if you get them at the right price, you know, I mean, if you get these in a job lot for pennies and you sell them at the right price, I'm sure they can be quite quick. But I do like to hold out for a little bit more than other people get. Um, but these are like, the only way I can describe these with my very little knowledge is, you know, barley twist candlesticks, wooden ones, they're like that, they're like that style. I can't call them barley twist because, well actually can I call them barley twist? Because I was thinking barley twist relates not only to the pattern but the wood, but maybe not. Maybe you can call these barley twist, but I don't know. Someone else would have to illuminate me on that. Oh, I've got another question. I know someone in the chat will be able to answer it, but um, yeah. So that's those, I mean, you know, they're quite nice. I'd probably price these higher than just an average pair of brass candlesticks. So they're quite nice. Um, but yeah, you can't generally get a lot for brass candlesticks. They're very bread and butter items, but there's always some money there. Um, right, here's the, here's the thing that I wanted to ask someone about, right? So this is a copper kettle. I think this is what's known as a swan net, uh, is it swan? Yeah, swan neck, I think. I'm not 100% sure. I have to do a bit more research on that. I want to call it an elephant ne uh, neck. I, like, if I was the one to have named this, this neck here, I would call it, no, an elephant trunks kettle. So I would say, this, guys, is a copper elephant trunks kettle, uh, a copper kettle with an elephant's trunk uh, spout. And that's what I would call it, right? But we're not going off that, because that is completely wrong. But... Um, I think it is called a swan neck on the, on that uh, brass ke uh, copper kettle there, but I'm not 100% on that, so don't take my word for it. But here, can you see here, this here? Now, can anyone tell me in the chat, is that what is known as an acorn finial? Because I, I see in the auction, right, I see in the auction catalogue with uh, certain brass kettles, copper kettles and stuff, uh, Brass kettle with acorn finial, copper kettle with acorn finial. And I don't know what it means, I haven't a clue. But I think that is an acorn finial. Is that an acorn finial? It looks like an acorn. So it's making me think that that's an acorn finial, but I don't know. If so, it looks like it's actually been applied later on. Because it, it doesn't look like that was its original thing. I don't know. I don't know, but anyway, if anyone could illuminate me on that, I'd be really appreciate it. Um, yes, swan neck is correct. Oh, great, I got something correct. That's awesome. Um, ele elephant trunk. I still think elephant's trunk is better, though. Can we just agree on that? Elephant's trunk, elephant's trunk spout. I'm gonna, uh, but yeah, okay, I'm not gonna put that in the list in. I'm gonna put swan neck, but yeah. So, Gary, if you're in the chat there, or, uh, I know Caroline's in the chat there, um, is that an acorn finial? Is that, am I right in saying that? I really do not have a clue, but... Um, it's interesting anyway. Um, and then, these aren't the best thing in the world. Probably going to job lock these up or something. I might put a couple in the cabinet, but I really don't think these are going to be uh, the best use of space in the cabinet because they're going to be quite slow. But um, these are horse blasties type thing. Um, I don't even know what these are really used for, to be honest. I mean, just display, I suppose. But I think... I don't know, was that, like, that shape there, I imagine that there, the, the wind there, was used to be a horseshoe or something, and they flattened it down, put that bit of brass in it there, and made it into, like, a souvenir or commemorative piece, I don't know, I, I'm just speculating, uh, I don't know enough about these horse brasses type thing, but, um, yeah, so that's that one, there's loads of these, I'm not gonna get them all out, and then we've got some sort of little brass type plaque here, Peaver Park, 2000 came go oh, game fair oh my granddad does a lot with the game fair that's cool little thing 2000 day eh? god that wasn't that long ago um so they're not really even vintage and then we've got peaver park oh another one of them so these aren't very exciting actually but um we've got a uh winsford carnival again winsford is quite close to me uh vintage rally there We've got a load of these. I'm not going to get them all out. I'll just get another couple. Uh, oh, and then we've got a Peaver Park 1999. I don't know. Uh, nice little bit. Actually, you know what? These might be okay going in my cabinet because these are local interests. So I know they're not great. I know they're not even really vintage. But someone might have them off me for, I don't know, very, very little amount of money. A couple of quid or something. 
Um, maybe even a quid, something like that. I don't know. I don't know what the price of that. But yeah, they're kind of like local interest things. So uh, they might be best set aside in my cabinet for a little bit amount of money. Um, but yeah, and then there's a few more and a few other little bits that I haven't showed you and stuff as usual. But I can't show you everything. It takes forever. Um, I think I've still got a few bits downstairs, like only a few handful of bits. But um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed that. Anyway, guys. Um, Acorn finial, also correct, might be a different colour as more worn tarnished. Yeah, I did think that. I thought, I did think that is a little bit like, it's quite black. It's quite, are they meant to be black? Or are they meant to be uh, more of an acorny, browny colour? I thought they were more like browny. Um, check those blasts out before you give, give up, is that give up on them? Um, some are worth money. Oh, I think, I thought... I thought the majority are quite, um, uh, what do you call well, like quite low value or quite um, uh, bread and buttery kind of sales. But I don't know, maybe, maybe you are, I don't know. But um, I'm sure I'm sure it's like with anything, you know, with anything, there's ones that are really, really good. And then there's ones that aren't so great. And maybe with a lot of stuff, you can generalize. Like, for example, um, oh, the electro one is coming like you, you know with a certain item because there's a lot of them that aren't very good you end up generalizing and then saying like all of them aren't good but actually it's not the case like what could i say that with um what's a good thing with that like i know what a good thing with that is like um you know models of yesteryear and stuff like that like loads of them aren't worth money, right? Loads of them aren't worth money. But I'm sure there's probably one or two very really obscure ones or something that someone will pay okay money for. So it's kind of like that, you know. You, you generalize, but actually there are ones that are worth money. Um, I would leave alone. Do not clean it. Oh no, I'm not gonna clean. Oh no, I'm not. I don't clean the brass. No, no, <laughs> no. The only reason I don't clean the brass is because I can't be bothered cleaning it. But um. You know, I, I like it. I like it left like that as well. You know, I'm quite happy um, to leave things in the state that they're found because that, in a way, is a part of its history, and I like that about it. You know, I wouldn't. I just don't feel like cleaning it. You know, you. What what happens is like, well, not that, but let's say something in here is old, which it probably is, quite old. Then, when you're taking off that dirt or that patina or whatever it is. In a way, you're taking away some of that history. That's what I feel. I know I might be crazy, but well, I know I am crazy. But to me, that's I, I, I wouldn't want to do that, you know. So, and I know there's loads of people who would clean them up and get them really, really shiny. And it's like, oh well, it's nice. It looks new. But if, yeah, that's all well and good. But aren't you buying it because it's old? Is that not what you're buying it for? Because of the history of it? So why then are you trying to make it into something new? It's Baffles me, but anyway, I don't know. Um, there is your answer, Lucy. Ads just let a lecture in. Yeah, she's she's been around. She was out yesterday. Oh God, she was out for ages. Jesus, she was off on the town or something. I don't know. And then she came swattering it, so, uh, swattering in. Is that the word? Um, about sort of what was it? Like seven half seven or something. It was crazy, but um, yeah, she obviously loved it outside or something, but now today she doesn't really want to go out, so I think she like worn, uh, worn herself out yesterday, uh, and she was asleep on the bed there for a while while I was doing my haul. Um, does a bit of brass rubbing on the QT though? What's that? Does a bit of brass rubbing on the QT? What's QT? What's QT? QT. Are you referring to a product? QT? Don't know what QT is. Um, where is the? Oh right, yeah. Sorry, Lucy, you've just mentioned there. Where is your coat? Um, Peter, I am wearing my coat because, as I said, I was out in the garage. I'm actually I can take it off now, and you know it's it's warm in here now. But I was I literally before I um before I got all of this out uh, before I got all of this up here, I was in the garage sorting it out. So that's why I had my big coat on, and it's it's probably going to be warmer now. But what I do is. Um, I don't like I don't like going outside when it's early morning, um, but I did I did go outside today because you know it's getting cold now, and I, I feel this is proper true as well. But every year that goes by as you get older, uh, I know I'm not old. I'm not saying I'm old, but I mean as you get older, 
you you start to like winter less and less and I'm already getting to the stage now where I'm like I don't like winter <laughs> I don't like the cold I used to say oh yeah I can't wait for winter can go out in the snow and everything but now it's like oh no I don't want winter it's too cold so anyway I, I did go out into the garage it was cold down there and I pulled uh, I sorted through all this and took out all the crap and uh, then I brought it in, so that's why I had my coat on. Anyway, I just took 10 minutes to explain why I have my coat on. That is crazy. Um, right, uh, do, do, do what Caroline does, leave it up to the buyer whether they clean glass copper. Yeah, it's a good decision, I think, because the buyer can always clean it up, you know, but it doesn't really matter. The buyer can clean it up if they want to, or they can leave it. So it's, it's, it's the best decision, I think, not to clean it. If you clean it and then you put it on, put it on eBay, you could be shooting yourself in the foot because a buyer, a potential buyer, sorry, could see that and think and be put off because it's cleaned and then you won't get the sale. All, uh, well, otherwise, on the other hand, they may see it and think, oh, it's cleaned, great, I'm happy, I'll have it. So there's always that debate. But yeah, if you don't clean it, a buyer that does want it cleaned might still buy it when it's, uh, you know, even though it's not clean because they can clean it up themselves and... I think Caroline did say on one of the live chats that um, some people do like to actually clean it themselves. So maybe the, the, even people who want it clean will buy the patinaed one and then clean it up and enjoy the process of cleaning it up themselves. I don't know. I don't know. Um, anyway, I'll see you tomorrow for Thursday Talks. I'm, it's getting on now, isn't it? I've probably been over an hour. Um, so, yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining me. Uh, you can join me tomorrow at the same time as always about one o'clock tomorrow. I don't think it'll be half one. I think it'll be about one um, Yeah, I'll tell you what I've been getting up to we're gonna be doing the topic of uh, What was it? Oh god, right. I've, I've got I've lost my sheet here. It is Right there it is here's my sheet the first day talks topic adapt uh, adaptation adapt slash adaptability so that is gonna be the topic tomorrow so we're going to be talking about adaptability, being able, and I think it's a very, very good topic to talk about at the moment, um, especially over the next 12, 24 months, well, even 6 to 24 months with Amazon. We're going to see restrictions. We're going to see things like that, or at least I believe we are. So I think it's a very good time to talk about this and um, adaptability and stuff like that, and, and what you have to be like as a reseller to really... Uh, you know get ahead of the game. So yeah, I wanted to talk about adaptability tomorrow um, Yeah, so see you all. Thank you everyone for joining me very good chat and uh, Yeah, I will see you all very soon. Bye for now